Hello, everyone. Welcome to another video on the channel. Today we have an interview with one of my professors, Dr. McVeigh. Dr. McVeigh teaches several classes at Eastern Michigan University that assist teacher candidates about learning how to incorporate technology in their classrooms. Thank you very much for coming on, Dr. McVeigh. Well, I'm really happy to be on the show. I didn't realize this was going to be a show when I first joined, and I'm <laughs> part of it. I should have a little fern or something up there, but uh, it'll be. <laughs> Uh, let, let's see if I can give you any good answers today. Okay. Um, so the first question is, have you had any experiences before with students with autism? And if yes, what were those experiences like? Well, the answer is yes. Uh, first of all, there's two different uh, age levels of students that I used to work with. I was a high school uh, special education teacher and an upper elementary special ed teacher for years and years. And um, I did have a few students uh, with autism spectrum disorder on the, on, on the spectrum back then. Um, since coming to teach at university, uh, it was about 10 years before I first started recognizing that some of my students were, uh, had autism. Hmm. And uh, I, I wouldn't, I wasn't sure at first uh, but then after a few conversations with them and conversations with the, uh, 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 the uh, Disability Resource Center, I realized, ah, this is, aha, that's, that's what's going on here. Now I've got it. Now I'm a little more prepared. Yeah. So they have had some students in my college classes with autism. Okay. Very nice. Yeah. Uh, uh, the, the DRC has helped me out so much. And um the, the teachers have done a really great job of understanding once I did bring that up. Um, so yeah, I, re I really appreciate their, uh, their assistance through this. Um, and I would, say that, I would say that for the most part, professors on campus are quite willing to help and assist. Oh, and yes. they, can, yeah. uh, they, they just need to know. And that was one of the, we're gonna talk about some of the issues or the experiences. Mm -hmm. One of the issues I had with one student who, who did not, um, who, well, that's good. You're not jiggling anymore. I like yeah. that. He he didn't um, he didn't go and get a letter of uh, um, uh, accommodation. Yeah. And that was that was frustrating. I mean, I we we worked something out, but I he he should have really spoken to me much much sooner in the semester. Uh, so that was one experience. The reason I realized something was going on because it, submissions were coming in really, really late. Mm -hmm. Excuses and there was no interaction between us, like no emails. You've been very good with emails to me, but some some of my students with autism aren't proficient in reaching out to the professor and and asking you know general questions or explaining why things are going to be late. Uh, or if there are issues going on that they don't understand the assignment. So, uh, and, and that sometimes prompts me. What I do in my class is I send lots of gentle reminders. I hope you haven't received one yet. Uh, if if it, I send a little gentle reminder email and sometimes the students go, oh, oh, I forgot all about it. Right. And, um, and that helps. Uh, but when I don't even get a response to a gentle reminder note, that, that makes me a little worried and sets off the alarm bells. So yeah, definitely, yeah. Um, so every uh, study I have read shows that technology significantly improves the educational journey of these students. What do you think technology provides in order to give that improvement? Well, <laughs> talk to the wrong guy here. Technology can be defined in a number of different ways, of course, but we're, we'll go with a real simple approach and talk about using computer technology mm -hmm. because more and more uh, lessons now are being uh, managed asynchronously or in an online setting I have found it's a little easier for my um, students on the on the autism spectrum to to uh, to handle the work better uh, than when they used to come into a class and and have to keep up with me and my yeah. my 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 joking around and so forth. I found that they, if I wasn't straight on task, they had frustrations resetting them to get to get back on target. Uh, it took me a long time to figure out what was going on in that case. But since we've moved uh, to a lot of our courses being online, 
um, and asynchronous, I have found that that has been a real asset for my students that we, with autism, they can focus on the content, they can focus on, you know, the specifics of what it is I'm asking them to do, rather than having to deal with, with my antics in the classroom, and have to deal with that whole social interaction part. Right, yeah. And yeah. you're agreeing with that, that's a real issue, are you finding that's a, have found that's an issue? Yeah, um, especially the social part for me, like I have a pretty bad social anxiety in the classroom. Um, and it's been like really beneficial to bring down like my stress levels, like going online and, and um, not having to have that in-person interaction. Um, I, I, I definitely do learn a lot better because I mean, with autism, like you're facing a separate battle in the classroom, like you obviously have to know all the information, but you're also just so self-conscious about how to act and, and how to behave and what to say and like what your tone of voice should be. Um, so we we tend to think a lot more than, than most people. Would you say overthink it? Nah. Overthink it, yeah. Yeah, well, um, I've had some, what I discovered though, is that the students are uh, with autism who are in my face-to-face -face class, the rest of the students in the class are, seem to be very, very helpful toward them. Oh, yes. Yeah. Because they've uh, encountered them or been in classes with them before. And sometimes they've known this person for a year and a half before they right. get and that. And so they are very understanding and very patient. And I, I, I love that about my, they're all gonna be future teachers and you would, mm -hmm. That that they'll learn some the 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 skill of being patient. Absolutely, uh, right. yes, yeah, absolutely essential to the job. So um, I I um it it was really unfortunate because um I had a uh, camper with 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 Aspergers and um, nobody nobody else knew how to like handle him and so and they knew I had Aspergers. They say, okay, can you figure something out with him and because I had that experience before, I, I totally got it and I worked with him and he was my favorite camper, not gonna lie. <laughs> so, so yeah, um, it's, it's unfortunate, but I'm, I'm glad that a lot of people have that patience. Um, is, is it possible to have technology that gives all groups of students an equal platform or is it just a case of trying to get it as equal as you can? Well, that's a very interesting question. And I'm not sure if you've heard this acronym before, UDL, Universal Design for Learning. Yeah, uh, I have a couple of times. Well, in, in fact, I just came from a workshop uh, uh, about an hour ago in which a number of professors, about 15 of us, got the basics of uh, uh, understanding what UDL is all about right. through a professor from special ed called, uh, named Jennifer Desiderio. And in a couple of weeks, I'm going to be doing a session on UDL in online teaching. So the idea is that it, it to, to, to limit the barriers to instruction by giving students multiple ways of approaching the task and multiple choices for how they can uh, perhaps try out different assignments to work with their strengths and their skills. And, um, uh, and I believe technology can help in that regard. So um, I've just got, I made a note or two, just give me a second to be a, ah, I don't, my, my handwriting is unclear. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so you said, is it possible just to using technology to make things as equal as possible? Let me, let me change it to a, to leveling the playing field. Yes. Uh, leveling the playing field. Exactly. I mean, I suppose in one respect, the ideal would be that I shouldn't know that you have Asperger's mm. when watching you or when we're interacting with each other. And uh, once you tell me this information at the start of the class, I actually work very hard to not pay attention unless something comes up. You know, it's, my goal is to try and create assignments that are as balanced as possible for anybody to, to manage the tasks. Uh, and that if they get too difficult, this is a really good, good opportunity for students to reach out to me and say, hey, I don't understand this. And if you're following the principles of universal design for learning, uh, it's, it's an opportunity to improve the teaching process, to improve the course design. And that's why I love getting emails from students. Every time they ask a question, they're afraid that sometimes that I'm going to pick on them for not knowing something. 
But a lot of times the questions help me to clarify this. If, if this student didn't understand the instruction, mm -hmm. others probably didn't as well. So I I'm see, yeah. to get questions from you, questions from anybody. And, uh, recent, and things that I think are perfectly clear to understand, it turns out not necessarily so. So. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. And I think that's uh, that's great that you, you do the UDL. Um, I, I plan to um, attend a few sessions like that myself, like before I go into teaching, just just to get a better idea um, and and see some real life examples. So that's good. Well, the next one is uh, January twenty fifth at uh, nine thirty in the morning. That's a Friday, nine thirty in the morning. Is it available to all students? Uh, I don't. I think it's available to all faculty. I don't. No okay. student actually uh, has actually asked about it yet. Maybe we should just uh, drop you into the class, huh? I'll, I'll send you the information for uh, registering. Why not? And all if right. you can, and if you can make it, great. If not, I'll, I better make a note with my. <laughs> okay, you 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 ask the next question while I'm making a note. Okay. Here. Okay. Um, where where should I begin when it comes to giving specifically my neurodiverse students assistance with technology? I have no idea. No, because, <laughs> because it depends on what we're talking about with technology. Um, uh, I, I guess like um, when it comes to making interactive PowerPoints or um, things like uh, Duolingo or um, what's that app that uh, Class Dojo, that's the other one. So it's so like apps like that. Like how do, how do I give assistance to my neurodiverse students with that? I've got to be really clear in the question, though. You're talking about for uh, uh, students in my class necessarily who want to be teachers or students in your own class? Students in my own class, my future students. One of the most, I guess one of the tricky things is just keeping that line of communication open with your students, making sure that they feel quite at ease asking you questions, regardless of what the technology is. Uh, they should be able to... Uh, you and you as a teacher need to have that uh, formative assessment going all the time. Uh, you, uh, there, you know, there's two big types of assessment. One is the summative assessment to see what they've learned along the way. The other is the formative assessment where you're constantly checking in. Right. So you, if you're a, if you're in a face-to-face -face class, you're going to have to figure out ways of checking in with your students regularly to make sure they understand. Uh, regardless of what technology they use. It's funny that you mentioned Class Dojo. Uh, Duolingo, they can work on their own. Uh, um, but Class Dojo is interesting because some, a lot of teachers are using it. Where Have you, have you experienced Class Dojo? I, I believe it's like um, an app that helps set up like a class contract, right? Part of it, yeah, too. Um, so let's say I, I'm a teacher and I'm giving a task in class. I can click a button and up will pop little avatars for every student in the class and I can give them little bonus points. I can also say, well, he was talking at a turn again in class. So I'll put a negative point or I'll give them a spe special ding. And at the end of the week, they can, or any period of time, you can, you can track how students have been managing and interacting. So using class dojo, let's say you have a, a neurodiverse student in your class and you decide together, you make a contract, we're gonna work on you not speaking out in class, or we're gonna work on you uh, speaking out more, whatever it is you're working on, you can set, set that up in Class Dojo really simply. So every time you see a little point, you can just go over to Class Dojo, press a button, and then carry on with the lesson. And then later you can track your progress over time. Right. Uh, it's a pretty neat tool in that respect. But I'm going to leap ahead to some of your other questions. So I guess like the most important thing there is, is feedback and formative instruction, uh, formative assessments with the students. Did you? Well, um, um, well, the, well the next question was, um, is there anything I should look forward to know if my neurodiverse students are making progress in their studies uh, because of technology? And how can I know that technology is a cause of that progress? Again, it all depends on the technology, doesn't it? So I, I know you had asked me to review these questions beforehand, but I guess that that was, I, I was pondering it. I pondered too long so before I got a chance to meet. But let me talk about some of the cool tools that can help. And then okay. maybe, um, maybe that'll help answer the question for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
a lot of the neurodiverse students I found if they're in a class where they need to take a lot of notes and note is, is a kind of a distracting thing because you're focusing, you're writing, you're concentrating on the writing, and you're also listening at the same time. And I, not all of my students can handle that information or that, that approach. There are a lot of note making apps or note taking apps that are out there. I know the Disability Resource Center uh, suggests one called Glean, G-L-E-A-N. I haven't had a chance to try it out yet. Uh, there's Notability where uh, I've, I've had that one before. Yeah, you, you can also you know use it as a recording uh, notes to yourself as well. Um, there's another I was looking for a book I had around here. It's I don't know where it is right now. Um, uh, note sketching. Uh, there are some students who will listen to what's going on in the class and do little sketches and doodles and diagrams to help explain what it is that's going on. You don't have to. You, and some of this takes a bit of time to learn. Right. So, do anything is teach your students how to take notes. It's okay, future teachers, it's okay to, to stop and explain the expectations, why you have the expectations. And if you and if you insist, insist that they take notes, you might as well teach them how. I get too many people say, oh, just take notes about this. My students don't always know how to take notes or they'll get a, a highlighter and start highlighting everything in the text. And they don't know where to stop and where to start with the highlighter. And there are real specific ways that can help you with the review process, the, 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 uh, the reviewing process. Um, uh, you, there's also voice to text uh, and spell checkers are a wonderful thing, thank goodness. And I was gonna say also, oh, a program that Google has called Keep. Um, sometimes it, uh, what I like about Keep is that it has a really good uh, voice to text technique. So I can go to Keep on my, even on my Android phone or any Google device that has a microphone to it. And you can call up this fresh page of notes and start typing away, or you can dictate the notes as well, which can be really, really helpful. Yeah, uh, yeah. Take care of the spelling later. I actually drove to Ohio once from here. And I, and I half dictated uh, uh, like a short story all the way down. I, I think it must have been about five pages of dictation using Google Google Keep. Probably it's illegal to do that sort of thing, but uh, I shouldn't have said I was doing it while I was driving. We'll just cut that part out. <laughs> I don't edit any of my interviews, so that's, I don't know what to do. <laughs> ah, don't worry about it. Um, so, uh, um. What kind of tools have you found have been helpful for you, uh, technological tools? Yeah, um, I, I guess I guess the main one would be um, like audio on um, on online textbooks because almost all of them come with audio, and um, I have really? trouble like reading just words on a paper when it's silent. Because um, the thing about autism, like there's a lot of thoughts going around. Um, so when things are silent, it's very hard to concentrate on reading. But when you hear those words, then you're able to focus a lot better. Um, so, so that's made my study so much quicker and it's made me learn a lot much. Um, the other thing that I wanted, that I like to do uh, was voice recorder. Um, whenever I felt like I was slipping away in the lecture, like, like my mind was, like I was losing focus, um, I hit the record button and the teacher would continue on in the background. Um, and then I would, not gonna lie, I would zone out quite a bit. Um, sure. so, I had, so I had to do that uh, pretty often. And then when I got back to my dorm, I played that recording when I felt focused enough. And then I was able to finish up the lecture because of that. Well, and, well that's, a, that's a great strategy. Yeah, yeah. So, and, and, and that wouldn't be possible without the technology of that recorder, which, which by the way, I think is really cool. Like, I think that's really cool how that happens. I was also going to suggest if you have a uh, partner or a learning buddy or something like that, set up a collaborative note page. Hmm. And, uh, you know, you set up, just open up a Google Doc and uh, you start writing and your partner starts writing. And, uh, and while your partner is writing, you can actually go off and either zone out or look for videos or look for links or things like that. Mm -hmm which could be very helpful. I was going to share, I, I want to back you up. Uh, when I was at university, second or third year, I took a Shakespeare class mm -hmm. and plays that were absolutely brand new to me. And I, I discovered, I, I thought it was 
almost illegal. I went to the library and went to their listening rooms and was able to get the complete cassette tape set of number of plays. And I tell you, it was uh, it was a wonderful thing. It got me through. It, I needed to hear it and read it. And I didn't realize yes. at first I thought it was a bit of a weakness on my part. Surely you should just be able to pick up a, a, a play by Shakespeare and read it. No, no, no. We, we all got we all got different brands and different ways of learning. And we got, we certainly do. Yeah. And, uh, um, as the concept as a consequence, that that was something that really helped me. So I'm absolutely 100 percent in favor of that strategy. And I didn't realize a lot of books were on tape now. Plus. There are a lot of things you can scan and have them using a turn it into a PDF and have the PDF read back to you. So there's all sorts of accessibility uh, tools out there. And if that helps, you know it helps you use it for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, final question here. Um, what advice would you give to future teachers who are not sure where to begin when it comes to assisting these neurodiverse students? Right, to assessing the assisting. Assist, assisting them, one thing they could do is if if they're, if they're going to recommend a tool to the students, they should try it out themselves. Mm -hmm. oh, absolutely, um, you know, you said notability and there's there's glean. I'm, I would hesitate to offer glean to a, a student until I've had a chance to try it. And in fact, I have a note on my calendar to write a note to the um, Disability Resource Center and ask them if I can get a a license or a test license or something like that, a sample, so I can try the try the tool out. Because I have four students in my class right now who are who have written in their accommodation letter that they're going to be using that. So, uh, so when it comes to using technology, make sure you've tried it out yourself. Make sure you, as a teacher, are really comfortable with whatever tool it is you're using. You can't just throw somebody in the deep end and say, "Oh, give it a crack." Um, some people like to use Prezi, for example, yeah. and I learned Prezi really well once upon a time, and I and I could was able to make all sorts of neat things with it. And then they changed the template, and then they changed it again, and then they changed the tools, and they changed. And I was three years out of date, so I was throwing students in, say, "Oh, just try making a Prezi," and I'd forgotten that Prezi had moved on. I was here, and Prezi was there, and I needed mm, to. Keep, yeah. As a teacher, you need well, to keep yeah. on top of it. Right. Yeah. And, and that's something that um, I personally have uh, trouble with, you know, that, like um, I, I don't know what to do when apps update as of now. I, I hope I end up uh, getting to learn that because every cause, time um, I, every time I turn my phone on in the morning and it says there's a software update, I go, oh, yeah, oh, yeah exactly. <laughs> well, with, with autism, like you got to stick to a routine. And when that routine changes, like I personally am not happy with that. Um, and part of that routine is like having the same format uh, when it comes to th certain things, especially apps. Um, like when whenever Instagram like changes its look and like changes the amount of things you can do, um, that takes me a while to adjust to that. Um, and that's just Instagram. Like when it comes to important apps, like what I'm going to be using. Um, I got to figure out ways to, to figure that out. Send me your, um, your username on Instagram. If it's easy, write it down right now, but uh, so, so I can follow you as well. I, I, I have Instagram, but I never, I don't have any followers. I don't oh, okay. Yeah. I, I was thinking about setting up a Twitter. I know you have Twitter. Uh, I've, I've seen you before on, on it. Um, but uh, I'm not well really for, for Twitter. Instagram is really taking off amongst my students. This year I surveyed them, and it's amazing how many were using uh, Instagram. Very few students are using Twitter, which which is interesting to me. Although I'll, I'll, uh, I'll put my username in the uh, I'll send okay. you a DM for the username. I, I have a joint account that I run. Okay, I was going to share something. Um, I, I'm a school board trustee at Saline Area Schools, and we have 300 teachers on, on, on staff, 300 mm -hmm. certified you know, educators. And uh, there are about 250 of them with accounts, Twitter accounts. Okay, they use, yeah. They use it for professional development. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's just a class account, and they share things that are going on in their class with the parents, 
Uh, so the parents come in and go out each year. It's new. And uh, uh, I, I think uh, Twitter is a great tool for educators. That's for sure. I'm not so sure about Instagram. And, and I shared, a student shared with me one year. Here's another tool um, that I, I'm still not there yet. Pinterest. Uh, I one student said I go to Pinterest before I go to Google, hmm. and I just say, really, wow, okay. I go or I mean, um, if you want to learn how to do something too, eh, there's always YouTube. But <laughs> anyway, sometimes you learn the wrong way to do things as well. Well, I hope that was helpful to you, uh, Alex. Extremely, extremely, yeah. Um, and I, I tend, I um, I hope that whoever sees us are uh, educators and are able to help out with. And well, I'm uh, sure you get some good advice for that. So well, I'm sure you have, I'm sure you have millions of fans out there, right? I only have about 400, but that's all right. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is all you: one American, two Brits, three Aspies. Is that it? Yes. Uh, what are Aspies? Uh, Aspergers. Say again. Uh, people with Aspergers. Uh, it's, Aspies. It's, uh, yeah. Oh my goodness gracious, I missed that. All right. Well, well, Dr. McVeigh, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And um, if you would like to share this, I can, uh, this video when it comes out, I, I, I will absolutely send you the link if you would. Fantastic. I appreciate that. Well, I've written down your account. I'm going to try and I'll, I'll get you on Instagram right away. Okay. All right. Well, have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you, sir. You take care. All right.